Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Jody Scholes and I am your instructor for the uh, MBLEX review course. I'm so excited to be here again. Uh, today we get to talk about the benefits and physiological effects of massage, one of my favorites really, because there's so many benefits to massage. Um, and uh, today we get to dig down even deeper uh, into some familiar and maybe not so familiar topics. Uh, I've got a little curveball for you in the middle of our learning today, but today's class is, is in three parts. One, we're going to talk about the mindset and test-taking strategies for the MBLEX. Uh, it is so important to understand that this is not about your knowledge. Okay, a little bit about your knowledge. This is not about how good you are as a massage therapist, good. Your qualities that you bring to the massage table. That's not what this is about at all. This particular test, this particular exercise you're going through right now, you've been through massage school, you've been through the learning. What you're going through right now is you're learning how to take a test and that's test taking strategies, mindset and technique. So we're gonna talk about that in the first part of class. Then we do some learning, some remembering, some, oh yeah, that's right. You get super clear on the benefits of massage for almost every system of the body. I think I have almost everyone covered. Yeah. Then we're gonna, in part three of our class today, we're gonna dissect some questions. And oh, you guys be ready. These questions today, I've thrown in a bunch of weirdness. So at some point during the dissecting of the questions today, you may be like, <gasps> like, what, what is that? That's okay. Part of that dissecting of the questions. In fact, part of the practice exams, when you take practice exams, whether you take them with me, you take them through ABMP, you take them through AMTA, through um, David Merlino, great one. Um, whether you're using Quizlet, there's so many resources, right? The important part of taking a practice exam is having a freak out moment. It is, it's having a freak out moment. Honestly, I want you to have the freak out moment. Please freak out at some point, like, oh my God, I don't know what that is. Or, oh, I got a 50 on my test. It's okay. I want you to have the freak out moment before you go to the Amplex because it's almost for sure you're gonna have a freak out moment while you're in the test. <laughs> it happens. Charlotte's saying in the chat, I had mine two days ago. Yeah, the freak out moment. Yeah, like, holy mackerel, this is ever going to happen. Yes, it is going to happen. And then guess what? Once it happens and you've passed the test, you might have another freak out moment. Like, oh man, what do I do now? Like, you'll have the relief and then we'll celebrate. In fact, um, Let's get into the, um, the PowerPoint uh, so you can see a little bit of what I'm talking about as far as um, the freak out moment and um, the after effects. So thank you for your patience. So welcome back. You're here at the MBLEX review course. I'm so glad you're here. Aren't you glad you're here? Look, no matter what chaos is going on, for the next hour, we're together. That's a good thing. So I wanna to talk to you about the freak out moment and how it turns into the celebration. And uh, this is a story about a real life student who had a massive test taking anxiety. And one of the things we practiced, and it was one of the ways I learned that, that graduates need a freak out moment because some of you are really good students now. Whether you're a really good student or you're not such a good student, doesn't really matter. It's actually better for the really good students when they have the freak out moment. And Teddy was a, a, was a fabulous student. We have, we, I know there's a few people who have been through this program who have undergraduate degrees, they're super smart, um, and they're used to having it all come naturally. And during a test, Teddy would freak out. It, it, his mind would go blank. 
And so part of what we do here is we get you really tough tests with crazy questions that you actually don't need to know the answer. Well, you do kind of, um, that you could know the answer to. But it's to cause this emotional eruption, which ha ha helps you to face any lingering self-doubt. There's my secret. There's the secret sauce. Yes, we go through training. Yes, we dissect questions. Yes, we have great technique. But the emotional component of this course is really the secret sauce. Getting you to that emotionally strong stamina. And part of the way we do that is we go through the practice exams and we go through the, the, the emotional roller coaster that it is to prepare for and pass this test. One other strategy I wanted to share with you that I shared with Teddy, um, and that was to plan your reward. You can see it, um, Teddy has a significant other, has a little freak out issue, has a little test taking anxiety. But one of the things that we did with Teddy was to plan the reward. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to take his girlfriend to a awesome restaurant. He wanted to plan a nice dinner to celebrate. And so they did, they said, okay, whether that's next month or next year, that's what we're gonna do to celebrate is where would we go? What would we order? Let's look at the menu, really visualize, get emotionally attached to that outcome. We do that as well when we think about a passing score, right? Because you see pass. You see pass on a piece of paper. What is that gonna feel like when you feel that pass on the piece of paper? Yes, that is the emotional transition. You're gonna get the pass, you're gonna call me, you're gonna text me, you're gonna post in Patreon, you're gonna send me a text, you're gonna post on YouTube, wherever you're watching this, you're gonna let me know because I get so excited when I know you've passed. Oh, makes me so happy. And what Teddy did was he had that nice meal. He planned that nice meal. And that is also part of your test taking strategy is to plan your reward. Plan where you're gonna go. Plan if you're gonna finally take that big vacation. All right. That is help on test taking strategies. The mindset of knowing that there's gonna be a freak out. But then after you've passed, you get to have another freak out. Oh, I passed. Oh, let's go for that reward. Yeah. Yeah. And then you might worry, uh-oh, how am I going to practice? Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> but let's get into our content um, today, which is part two of our class, which is the benefits and physiological effects of massage. Yay. And you can feel free to ask questions in the chat. Um, so if you're not here with me live, sorry, um, but uh, you can always ask me questions in Patreon or um, hit me up on Facebook Messenger. Uh, you can leave a comment on YouTube, however you found me. All right, let's go back here. So today we're gonna review the mechanical and the reflexive effects of massage because this is where many massage therapists really are a little fuzzy. And so we've got two types of benefits of massage, uh, basically for all of the systems. Um, this is uh, a physiological, we start here with a physiological effect because this addresses both the physical and it affects different levels, uh, different systems of the body. And so we're gonna start by looking at the mechanical and the reflexive effects of massage. The mechanical effects of massage are physical. They are something we have controlled. So the tissue has been kneaded, it's been lifted, it's been rubbed, it's been manipulated. Think about a cold piece of clay and you wanna like, like warm it up, right? That is a mechanical, I'm physically changing the formation of this clay. And through this I do, now I can't just take a hammer 
and hit on clay, right? How does clay change? You've got to warm it. You've got to rub it. You've got to knead it. You've got to ease into it, right? And then what happens? What happens are considered the mechanical effects. The tissue softens. It stretches. The blood flow may increase, creating hyperemia in the area. So the blood flow increasing is the mechanical effect. So this is a physical, it's all in the physical. Now, by comparison, let's look at the reflexive effects. Reflexive effects are all about things we can't control. We can't make our heartbeat slow down, although yogis are showing we can. But that's still considered a reflexive effect of massage because our breathing will deepen, lowering our blood pressure. Do we have a like a, a, a switch that we can flip to lower our blood pressure? No, we can't, right? Our body has to do that. Our autonomic nervous system has to do that, right? And so those are the reflexive effects of massage. So more rhythmic breathing. Yes, yes. So autonomic, automatic re responses in the body are reflexive. It's a reflex. Now, you know, when the doctor hits your knee and it goes boing, that's a reflex, right? You didn't make your leg go boing, right? That's a reflex. So we didn't control it. That's what makes it kind of funny. So we don't control we can sit, take a deep breath, but the reflexive reflect effects of massage really enhance and deep and breathing. We don't really think about it. All right. So we're clear on that. Let's move into the systems of the body that we're going to talk about today. We're going to go through them. This is not a substitute for massage school. This is what you learned in massage school. Okay. So let's take a look at these systems of the body. Let's start with the nervous system. So the nervous system is comprised of two general parts, but it, uh, the nervous system itself um, responds to stimulus, um, sending an electrical action um, along these neurons. You can see the outline of our nervous system, but primarily uh, we wanna know that neurotransmitters relate to our nervous system. They're the chemical messengers of the nervous system, but the anatomy of the nervous system. So I'm not gonna talk more about how the nervous system works, but more the anatomy of the nervous system. So we do know that the response of the nervous system is pretty instantaneous. Um, neurons, neurotransmitters, those are all the chemical messengers of the nervous system. But how does, what does that look like? It looks like two different systems of the body. One is called the central nervous system and one is called the peripheral nervous system. And there's different responsibilities for both those systems. For the central nervous system, that consists of our brain and our spinal cord. It is, it's named that way because it is the receiver of all the information and it sends out all the information. So it's central. It's like Grand Central Station in New York City where all the trains come into it at some point. <laughs> so, and then all the trains leave, right? So the central nervous system is our brain and our spinal cord. The other part of our nervous system is the peripheral nervous system. So when the train leaves the station, it goes to the peripheral nervous system. These are the nerves, the ganglion, anything outside the brain and the, the spinal cord, the ganglia, excuse me. And so this is an image of your peripheral nervous system. In the central nervous system, we have the brain and the spinal cord, and we're moving over now to the peripheral nervous system and the anatomy of that system. Now there's the somatic and the autonomic. We're gonna take a look at the autonomic because that's where um, I've found therapists sometimes get a little, a little sticky. 
We've got two parts of the autonomic nervous system, and that's the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Let's take a look at the sympathetic response. This is also known as the fight or flight response. These are the different things that your body will experience during fight or flight. This is a primal response, normally due to some attack or perception of attack, a fear. It's back to our caveman days. Ah, I need to fight the saber tooth tiger. Ah! And so your body will react. I'm not gonna go through them all. If you wanna look at them more, pause and dig down deeper. I'm gonna move on because we have a lot of systems of the body to, to cover today. So let's move into the parasympathetic response. Parasympathetic response is the rest and digest. Rest and digest. This is the relaxation response that we're going for in massage therapy. All of these different outcomes in the far right-hand column over here, I'm gonna move us so you can see them all, great. So rest and digest. And my uh, clue for remembering the difference is because a paraplegic, what is a paraplegic? Paraplegic, para, pair, two, quadriplegic, four, right? Quad, four quad muscles, quad, four sides, two, a quad. So a paraplegic, is someone who would have a, two limbs um, paralyzed. So paraplegic would rest and digest. They wouldn't be running from the saber tooth tiger, right? Paraplegic, if they have two limbs, usually it's their lower limbs. So they wouldn't be running from, they'd be rest, they'd have to rest and digest. That's how I remember the parasympathetic versus the sympathetic. The sympathetic nervous system you can, if it works for you, use the memory tool of, wow, I would feel so much sympathy for people who, is, who are always in fight or flight. Fight or flight, ah! And unfortunately, too often Americans live in fight or flight. There's just so much stress. We're so busy, right? That all of these things in the middle column tend to happen regularly. And unfortunately, that's, in your adrenal glands, some of you who are listening, some of those clients you'll be treating have been told you might be in ex adrenal exhaustion because they're always trying, your adrenal glands are always trying to regulate your hormones with fight or flight. Breathe, get into the parasympathetic, get into the rest and digest phase. How can you do that? Well, you can listen to your breath, but you know what I do? I scheduled time to think. I had some time this morning and it was lovely. I just needed to think. Unscheduled time with a cup of tea, cup of coffee, glass of water, light a candle, smudge your house, whatever. But to sit and think. That's sometimes how you can get out of the fight or flight and into the rest and digest. Obviously, massage therapy is a great way to get into the rest and digest, the parasympathetic nervous system response, the relaxation response. And I would challenge you that if you haven't had a massage in the last month, get one in the next 30 days. Guess what? Guilty. I haven't had a massage in over a month. So I'll take you on that challenge and we can meet back in the chat um, to make sure that we're not only working hard, um, but we're doing our self-care as well. All right, let's move on to the endocrine system. All right, what is the endocrine system? As you can see here, it is the system in your body that produces hormones. Um, it is the thyroid gland, the thiamus, um, our pancreas is in there, um, that processes, uh, that helps with digestion. We've got the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the pineal, um, our reproductive organs are a part of our endocrine system. Uh, as is our adrenal glands, as we mentioned. Yeah, our adrenal glands too. All of these help to regulate hormones. They either secrete a hormone or they regulate hormones. You know what else does that in the body? The endocannabinoid system. 
a little plug for the CBD uh, people out there. Just saying, if you haven't tried it, give it a try. Not necessarily to smoke it and get a psychoactive effect, but to try it as topical. Maybe to use it on someplace that hurts or if you're practicing when you're practicing massage, to use it in your practice. The endocannabinoid system also helps to regulate different systems of the body. And that's where the CBD goes, is into the endocannabinoid system. So hormones um, are secreted, they travel through the bloodstream or through the intercellular fluid um, and they are targeted. They go to a very particular cell or organ. Um, and these hormones either increase activity or decrease activity. So for example, we've heard of um, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism. This is hypo, the thyroid is low in its production, hyper, it's high in its production, right? So the endocrine system needs to regulate the production um, of hormones from our uh, from the glands that are in the system. So you've already heard what's in the endocrine system. Hypothalamus is in the brain. The pituitary is in the brain. Pituitary is responsible for growth hormone, right? Uh, we hear sometimes about uh, tumors on the pituitary causing problems. The pineal gland, the thyroid, uh, the thiamus, pancreas, adrenals, and our reproductive organs, both the testes and the ovaries. What does it do? So massage therapy, the benefits of massage therapy for the endocrine system, uh, it helps to reduce anxiety. How does it do that? It promotes relaxation, but by regulating the hormones that is going through that parasympathetic nervous system response is how it helps to reduce anxiety, how it promotes relaxation. It decreases the beta waves in our brain. Um, and so, um, mental activities increase beta. So there are times we want to increase that beta, increase the beta, but when it comes to calming down, we want to calm down those beta waves. Um, so when beta is active, that's considered an aroused state or hyper arousal. And when alpha waves are present, that is non arousal. That's evidence. Alpha waves represent our relaxation response. Beta waves, arousal. Alpha waves, calmness. Uh, so, and then it also can increase our delta waves, which we look to do by doing maybe the binaural beats, if you've heard of those. But massage therapy, they have measured, it increases the delta waves, which promotes a deeper sleep cycle. I often will tell my clients, you're probably going to get a really good night of sleep tonight because your body in the massage, depending on the kind of massage, the endocrine system kicks in and says, hey, we're relaxing. And it's a lot easier for your clients that evening to get into the relaxation state again. Relaxation state is where most relaxation and sleep state is where most of the repair of the body is done. So that's where we heal our tissue. That's where we decrease inflammation. Most effectively is during our sleep cycles. And, uh, the, and through massage, you can also increase your dopamine levels. So all of these make sense, right? Increase um, the alpha, the relaxation, um, increase the delta, relaxation, deeper sleep, increase dopamine. Think about it, you're dopey. Oh, I want to be dopey, right? I want to feel good. It gives that feeling of um, overall well-being in dopamine. And increase serotonin, which also is part of the reason it helps with sleep. Some people take serotonin externally. Massage therapist actually increases, has been researched and tracked to increase some people's serotonin level. Uh, massage also reduces our cortisol level, which is a result of the flight or fight response. It reduces the norepinephrine. So epinephrine is what gets launched. Um, norepinephrine from our adrenal glands reduces epinephrine, so norepinephrine. So when we're in flight or fight, ah! And so we got to run fast. 
you know, all of a sudden our, our adrenal glands kick in and, and put out this hormone. So massage reduces cortisol, reduces norepinephrine, reduces feeling of depression, improves sleep patterns. So you get the idea. All these really healthy things, right? By regulating the hormone system. There's a lot of benefits of massage to the muscular system. And this will sound fairly familiar. Ooh. I wanna show you my cup that I showed these guys earlier. Hello. This is what we're doing, you guys. We are staying calm and we are changing healthcare. That's right. We are staying, we are staying calm. You, by doing this work, are gonna change healthcare for the people who you, you touch. You are going to bring them a tool that they have never had before, which is a way to manage their endocrine system, their nervous system, and now to reduce pain in their muscular system. No more. Oh, you can't see me. Okay. Um, you can't see. Oh, you can't see me. That's right. <laughs> Here, look, I shared this earlier. Oops, wrong side. So keep calm and change healthcare. That's what I'm telling you guys are doing. That's why we're here, um, is to stay calm and um, change healthcare. And you are changing healthcare for the clients that you work with. You are bringing them this amazing tool of massage therapy that can naturally help their body get back to homeostasis. No need for all the drugs. Hopefully we can reduce the medication, right? That's changing healthcare. Yeah, all right. Back to the lesson at hand, back to our regularly scheduled programming. All right, muscular system. We're quite familiar normally uh, with the benefits of massage to our muscular system. Let's move through these at a nice clip. All right. Hmm. I can see that my screen is being compromised. I hope you can see the whole thing. Please let me know in the chat if you can't see the whole thing because this is meant to be a bigger screen. Oh, there we go. All right, now it's back. All right, so obviously massage releases muscular, relieves muscular tension. Um, so it technically, so a muscle is just a hunk of meat without the nervous system, right? And so that excitability in the sympathetic nervous system is what makes a muscle tense. So typically, we've talked about this in postural analysis before, but take a look. All right, I can't do that. So see how I have a chronically high left shoulder? I don't know if you can see it with this shirt. That is an excitable muscle. That is something in my sympathetic nervous system that has turned on and doesn't know how to turn off. Massage can help with that. It calms it down. It reduces muscle soreness and fatigue. We're gonna have a question later on about athletic coaches. Um, and when I think about muscle soreness and fatigue, I think about maybe you've had a long walk or you've done a hard workout or you've moved. Um, and so massage by mechanically moving metabolic waste through your tissue by kneading, compressing, gliding, after the tissue is warm, we have to warm that tissue first, otherwise it doesn't work. So it reduces muscle soreness because muscle soreness is technically metabolic waste trapped in the muscle. That's very much most of the time because a sore muscle is a muscle that has little micro tears, typically. I'm kind of generalizing there, but that's at one of the ways it reduces muscle soreness and fatigue. It helps to recover. Uh, so, um, it reduces trigger point formation and helps to mobilize fascia. So manually, mechanically, what we're doing is we're separating the fibers, uh, the muscle fibers, which improves the performance. It improves balance and posture. It improves flexibility in the muscles. So it, it makes that muscle function better when the muscle is fully available. 
it lengthens the muscles. It, it can help to tone weak muscles. This is lovely for our senior population, the population who's really senior, senior, um, in the sense of maybe 75 plus. Um, if you find that those seniors have weak muscle, it could be because they're just not all very mobile. Massage can improve the circulation, benefit to the circulatory system. By doing so, it helps to tone those weak muscles. So if you have a passion, Reva, for working with the elderly, then this is one of the, the scientific ways that massage therapy benefits um, weak muscles. This can also be after surgery. It can also be after an injury that that muscle, if you've ever had a cast on, um, you know, that that muscle um, gets weaker. And so massage can help with that. Uh, so massage and pain, how does pain work? Well, pain works because there are neuroceptors, um, special fibers in our muscles that, that recognize pain. So there's a painful stimulus. It is recognized by those muscle fibers called neuroceptors, um, and it creates a reflex. So a contraction in the muscle. And that's a protecting, it's a guarding, right? Um, sometimes though, that muscle forgets once it's reflexed, it's once it's contracted. If it happens a lot, that muscle can forget or get tuned, get trained to stay contracted. So this is why we get to get in and change, mechanically change, warm up and soften the muscle tissue of the, of the, of the muscular system. The, the, so the, here in this last little um, point, it says, from that point, the muscle splinting is intensified. So all the other fibers get in long and get involved and the cycle repeats and we get kind of trapped. I like to explain it to my clients as if it's like a circuit breaker um, that has blown, but it, it's blown and the light stays on. Normally when a circuit breaker blows, the light goes off, right? That's how you know. But this is one where the light stays on. And that also involves the nervous system because now there's a disconnect between the peripheral nervous system, the central nervous system, that muscle, I'm going very biomechanic with you here, but that muscle gets so tight, it interrupts the, mus the communication of the nervous system. Have you ever given a massage and have someone go into a relaxation state and all of a sudden, or maybe yourself, even when you go to sleep, maybe this has happened to you. All of a sudden you're like, you get this like kind of wiggle in your arm. You're like, what the heck was that? Have you ever had that happen? That is the nervous system waking up. That is neurotransmitters who were restricted by that muscular contraction. Now, all of a sudden they're able to communicate again. And sometimes there's a little, a little shock that goes through. It's more of the nervous system being able to communicate, more of the central nervous system being able to communicate with that part of the body. How cool is that? Another benefit of addressing the muscular system and an improvement in the nervous system. So we know that massage can help to decrease pain. It increases circulation. It reduces ischemia. Ischemia is a blood deficient area of the muscle. We'll sometimes say a part of the body is ischemic. For example, the Achilles tendon is ischemic. Just not a lot of blood flow there. So if we can even just get a little bit more, it's gonna help. Massage stimulates the release of endorphins. That's also one of the reasons it contributes to decreasing pain. Uh, so the pressure, that mechanical pressure of massage changes the pain information that's being sent to the central nervous system. It basically interrupts the pain cycle. Um, and it does so, let me show you, by relieving muscular spasms, increasing circulation, and promoting um, a more rapid disposal of waste products. Our body is going to dispose of waste products. We are wired with a urinary or you sometimes call it an excremental, excremental, 
a urinary system, but all the excrement. Um, so our body knows how to eliminate waste. We do that through sweat, um, through skin, through, you know, through other ways, but by softening, by, by addressing, by balancing the muscular system, it helps all the other systems in the body work better. Okay. One other thing is uh, with massage and the muscular system uh, is the connective tissue. So here we see a keloid uh, scar. That's that thick scar. And so that's because too much scar tissue laid down in one place. Once that wound has healed, massage can help reduce and also mobilize. I think that's my next slide. Yeah, to, mo to reduces excess scar tissue and mobilize that scar tissue. We don't wanna do it during the healing cycle through that injury healing cycle. But once it is healed and once it's safe to do so, we wanna work that connective tissue, even with old scars can help because it can decrease the adhesion. Sometimes a scar, like it won't move in a certain direction. Try that if you will, with abdominal scarring, especially cesarean section, if they have an old school cesarean section, um, you know, try it with permission, obviously, and with proper draping, but you can identify where those adhesions are and you can work to mobilize those adhesions. It reduces, oh, yay, we get to do this. Um, releases fascial restrictions. Um, so fix a, fix a trophy. Do you remember that word from school? I don't. And so I wanted to dig down for just a moment. Here's some bonus contents on what is fix a trophy? So what it is, is the concept of muscular, a, a therix tropic mex, uh, muscle is one that basically the theory is that tense muscles require slow, steady application of pressure. So basically this is actually a chemical term. Thixotropy is a, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, Thixotrophy, thixotrophy. Um, it's a chemical term that describes a gel that acts as a solid. So the thick, I'm gonna show you a little short video on this so you can ex so you understand it a little better. The thixotrophic nature of our muscles means that we have to go slow to sink in. It makes sense because like if you just try and pound on a tough muscle, it's gonna tense up, right? It's gonna resist. It's a thixotrophic reaction. So if we simply like get into that tough muscle, it's gonna have a defensive response that makes it hard. Watch this. Oh, okay, so here's a fun video. Thank you to Lamar University. Um, and as you can see in this video, let's go to this. Here's the, um, the link to the video. And I'm going to go to that screen next, but I do need to share my screen with sound. Mm -hmm. All right. This is too funny. Oh my God. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Andrea Ali. I'm a professional makeup artist based in no, Paris. Not. And in Yeah. Oh, here we go. So this is um, something that was done by these students. Watch this. Right now we're missing the cornstarch and the water and we're creating this still thing called a non-Newtonian fluid. When it comes under pressure, you push on it, you jump on it, you, you know, walk on it, it behaves like a solid. You, you can take a hammer, hit it and it will bounce back. However, if you just sit on it, it will sink and it's kind of hard to get out. That good is just water and cornstarch. Not if I'm some food coloring we're adding in a little bit to make it look uh, nicer, you know, more appealing. This today has been the fun as far. I get a lot of people were hesitant about it at first, and some probably still are. A lot of fun. It, it does feel like you're walking on water, and uh, hurts a little bit, but when you sink, it's a lot of fun. Getting stuck and trying to get out because it, it was an effort to try to get out because it took so long. It was sticky. 
they have a big trailer. They have about 2,000 pounds of cornstarch and a lot of water. And it feels like you're walking on a jello or a water. It's a, it's a lot of fun. It's surprisingly warm and it's very sticky. It's, it's actually a, hotter in there than it is out here right now. Okay. Oops. Got it. You guys are having some fun, right? Wait, is doing this, so. so, that demonstrates the thixotrophic effect of massage. Um, and the thixotrophic effect, thixotrophy. So you see that cornstarch um, and water, it acts as a solid if you just hit it hard. And that's what happens to our muscles. Our muscles are solid, but it, it repels if we hit it too hard. So the thixotrophic effect is that we have to go slow and steady if we want to sink in. All right, little sidebar there for you. Uh, back to the connective tissue, um, all of these things. So it releases the fascial restrictions because of our slow and steady pressure. Um, and it improves the healing of connective tissue, the healing of fascia, um, whether that's from injury or surgery. Oh goodness, it reduces dimpling um, and the form of cellulite. That's hopefully, there are some very specialized massage therapy techniques that uh, address dimpling of cellulite um, really effectively. Um, but in general, it, it can have that effect as well. All right, the respiratory system, we have just enough time to do a few more systems and get then get to our questions. So uh, let's do a couple more systems. The respiratory system, involves the lungs. All right, so let's go. Um, it involves the lungs. It involves all of these systems here. So uh, you can see it starts with the nose. The pharynx is not part of our digestive tract. The larynx is not part of our digestive tract. Okay, the trachea. Uh, no, it's where air goes. So just be careful. With, when we're looking at the pharynx, the larynx, and the trachea. That's part of the respiratory system, not part of the digestive system. We've got, of course, the lungs and the bronchial tubes. But massage therapy, the benefits of massage therapy reduces our respiration rate. Now, you would think it increases, right? Would increase our respiration rate. The rate of respiration is how many breaths we take. So it would increase my respiration rate if I went. <laughs> but to reduce my respiration rate means I'm going. I'm taking less breaths per minute, but deeper breaths. It strengthens rep respiratory muscles by allowing them to expand. So if they're short and tight, that's hard for them to strengthen, but by being able to take a deeper breath, they can expand, they can strengthen, they can stretch. Massage therapy can help to decrease asthma attacks. It increases the fluid discharge from the lungs. So if you've had a cold and you're getting rid of some phlegm, massage will help to increase the fluid discharge by increasing the capacity for that uh, rib cage to breathe and therefore eliminate. And so that's the uh, relaxation response that I'm talking about there, loosening those tight respiratory muscles. So which part of our nervous system is responsible for the relaxation response? A little sidebar here. Going to our chat. Yes, exactly. Good point. Uh, we'll talk about that, Charlotte, at the end of as fascia, like fluid or Yes. All right. Reva was the first to type in. It is the parasympathetic nervous system. So the parasympathetic nervous system is the frog, right? The rest and digest. The sympathetic nervous system is like the cheetah chasing the, the gazelle. Ah, butter flight. Help, I'm about to die. No, well, your body thinks so, but the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for um, the relaxation response. And that 
is the biggest benefit to our um, our respiratory system. The majority of the the benefits to the respiratory system are parasympathetic. So they're autonomic. I'm not saying, okay, cough up phlegm. I am mechanically doing that, but when it happens with a relaxation response, that 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 deeper breathing, that is our parasympathetic nervous system. All right, we've got the digestive system. We've got two more systems. All right, I know we're running a little behind, but we're gonna get there. We're gonna review the parts of the digestive system. I like to do that right after the respiratory system. So digestion starts in the mouth with our salivary glands. Our spit has some HCL, some hydrochloric acid in there. It helps to break down food. Our teeth, our tongue, the food goes down our esophagus. Esophagus is what? Not the trachea, not the larynx. Our esophagus goes down to the stomach. And then there's all these other parts of the digestive system as well. We know the colon, right? So the um, ascending, transverse, descending can also, you see the small intestine, the large intestine. That's a part obviously of our digestive. It's where we absorb the nutrition, but also involved in our digestive system is the stomach, the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder, maybe the appendix um, and the rectum because that's where, that's where food leaves. That rectum is really part of the um, X. You guys are gonna have to tell me what that is in the chat. It's the excre something, excremental system. Ugh, sorry, all right. But the digestive system. So the digestive system, how does massage benefit the digestive system? Specifically by the relaxation response, it promotes the evacuation of the colon. So once you rest, now, there is a mechanical colon stroke where you can work the belly. Are you actually pushing poop? Technically, peristalsis is what pushes poop. I don't know, is that going to be is that going to be a hashtag pushes poop? Um, so peristalsis is the result of the autonomic nervous system. It is how food moves through the digestive tract, right? That's technically what pushes poop. And so a relaxation response, calming down, return to homeostasis, it was what helps to promote the evacuation of the colon. It help, can help to relieve constipation, again, a, a nervous system response. Um, sometimes it is what you eat, uh, for sure, but sometimes um, the relaxation response can help to eliminate in that way. Um, it can help to relieve a colic and internal gas by improving absorption into the digestive tract. Little sidebar joke here. Uh, increases digestion um, by helping to improve absorption. All right, unfortunately, we don't have time for skeletal system. We have to move into our dissecting of the questions because otherwise we're gonna run out of time. This is a big lesson to try and get through all the way. Uh, so I'm going to skip down uh, to the um, to our questions and let's see ah uh, escape all right um, and I'm back with you now let's share the screen thanks for your patience. So I skipped uh, the skeletal system and I skipped the urinary system. Sorry, because we got to dissect some questions. I got to get to part three. And I know some of you got to go right at the one o'clock time. So let's get through some of these questions. Remember, we are going to eliminate. So you're going to be a little bit on your own here today. We're going to eliminate. We're going to read the question. We're going to understand the question. We're going to do our best to eliminate two wrong answers. And then we're going to get to the best answer. All right, we have five questions, and it will take us about seven minutes to get through those. 
So if you got to go right at one, mwah, you got to go right at the hour, mwah. Um, but we're going to get in there and dissect five questions today. And after the record, um, yeah, so let's just go. Mm -hmm. All right. Big long question to start. Nice little freak out moment. All right. Many coaches, athletes, and sports medicine personnel hold the belief based on observation and experience that massage can provide several benefits to the body, such as increased blood flow, reduced muscle tension, and increased muscle compliance resulting in increased range of motion. Massage might help to also increase blood flow by increasing muscle temperature from rubbing. This is known as a blank effect. Question is here on the left, answers on the right. Many coaches, athletes, and sports massage personnel hold the belief that, all right, we got answers coming in. Mm -hmm. So to the is it studio to, uh, so that must, massage can provide several benefits to the body. Now, remember, just because you hear coaches and athletes, we immediately go in one direction, right? So let's look at the question. So provide several benefits, increase blood flow, reduce muscle tension, increase muscle compliance, increased range of motion. Massage might help to increase blood flow by increasing muscular temperature from rubbing. This is known as a blank effect. Questions are, answers are a reflexive effect, a mechanical effect. It's known as sports massage effect. It is known as the neuromuscular effect. So I'm not going through a slide now where I'm eliminating any options. The next slide is gonna be the correct answer. So if you would like to make your best guess, go ahead and make your best guess. You can put it in the chat. I'm gonna check your answers now. <laughs> There's a couple oopsies. That's why when these big questions come up, we have to understand the question, right? So the question at the end of all that, massage might help to increase blood flow by increasing the muscle temperature from rubbing. This is known as a blank effect. It is known as a mechanical effect of massage. What? Why is it not sports massage? Because this is known as an effect. It's a, an effect of sports massage. What I described to you is sports massage. But this is known as a blank effect. Best answer here, mechanical effect. And it comes right from this PubMed article, the mechanisms of massage and effects on performance. There's the link, feel free to go to it. I'll put it also as an attachment when we post this video. Um, but take a look here, mechanical pressure, biomechanical mechanisms, all mechanical effects of massage. I want you to understand the difference. It almost always comes up on the emblex. All right, thanks. Back to dissecting the question. Uh-oh, we didn't cover skeletal system. Which of these is not a benefit of massage to the skeletal system? A, maintains posture and body balance. B, increases muscular tension that may eventually cause structure problems. Increases muscular tension that may eventually cause structural problems, increases, increases the flow of nutrients to the bones, increases flexibility and strength of joints. Best answer guys, not going through a slide today that eliminates the two wrong answers. The next slide is gonna be the right answer. So go ahead and throw your questions in there. I know, I'm letting you fly solo a little bit this week. Which of these systems is not a benefit, which is a, which of these is not a benefit of massage to the skeletal system. I'm gonna give you the clues here. Not a benefit, skeletal system. So we wanna find something that's not a benefit to the skeletal system. Okay, I see answers. Tick tock, tick tock. 
Ooh, you guys, we're on point on this one. You woke up. Yay, right, increases muscular tension that may eventually cause structural problems. That has nothing to do, increasing muscular tension is not a benefit of massage. It's not a benefit of massage to the, mu to the skeletal system. So a couple of layers there, right? I had to kind of twist that around. And for you guys who have English as a second language, God bless you, because this, answer is a little tricky. What's not a benefit of massage to the skeletal system? All right, which of these is a benefit to the nervous system? Which of these is a benefit? So is, is a benefit to the nervous system. Either sedated or either sedates or stimulates the nervous system, depending on the pacing and technique used acts as a mechanical cleanser, pushing out waste products, particularly for those who suffer from constipation. Can free nerves impinged by muscles or connective tissue, creates reflex effects from the stimulation of sensory receptors in the skin and subcutaneous tissues. All right, good luck with this. I will tell you there is only one answer to this. There's not, sometimes there's two right answers. In fact, we're gonna go through a question shortly that has two right answers. Which of these is a benefit, again, is a benefit to the nervous system, nervous system? I see one person who put an answer in here. Come on now. Best guess. Let's eliminate, let's use our test taking strategies. Let's eliminate an answer. So which of these is a benefit of massage to the nervous system? You know why there's no answers, you guys? Because this question is screwed up. This question should say, which of these is not a benefit of massage to the nervous system? Please forgive me. Please answer the question as if it is written, which of these is not a benefit of massage to the nervous system? So forget all those other answers. It'll make a lot more sense if you look at the question, which of these is not a benefit? And I'll wait for one more, like my five more seconds. And then we'll test, show you the answer. Letter B, Ooh, let's see how you guys did. Oh, we are close, close, close. Yeah, okay, here's why. Let's see who else got this. Uh, okay, I guess it doesn't matter. I know B, here's why. Nervous system. Almost all the benefits of massage. So either sedates or stimulates the nervous system. Obviously that's a benefit of massage, right? Either sedates or stimulates depending on the pace. Can free nerves impinged by muscles. Benefit to the nervous system creates a reflex effect from stimulation of sensory receptors in the skin or subcutaneous. You have to kind of stretch to know D, but look at letter B. Acts as a mechanical cleanser. Is that a benefit to the nervous system? It's a benefit of massage, but it's not a benefit to the nervous system. And this is what happens on the Umblex. They put in Answers like letter B, to be a distractor. Almost every question on the MBLEX is going to have a distractor. This is a very good example of a distractor in the sense that it is a benefit of massage, but it is not a benefit of massage to the nervous system. This is a benefit of massage to the digestive system. Next question, and I believe it's their final question. Oh no. I gave you the answer. Wow. Guess I was uh, in a hurry when I made these, these slides. So here you go. 
but let's take a look at the question anyhow. When massage is used on the blank system of the body, it helps to eliminate metabolic wastes and toxins, increase urine excretion, and stimulates the function of the kidneys. You may have been distracted by digestive. You may have even been distracted by muscular, but the proper answer is the urinary system. All right, that was a gimme. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's why we go through these questions to make sure that we're really pulling out what we need. We're really pulling out all the important parts of the question. Because that's where we can be like, what? That is the benefit of massage. Oh, we got one more, good. Last one, a reduction in anxiety and an improvement in mood state also cause relaxation after massage is a blank benefit of massage. A reduction in anxiety and an improvement in mood also cause relaxation after massage and is a blank benefit a psychological benefit, an emotional benefit, a reflexive benefit, a mechanical benefit. Four more seconds. Oh, I see all these answers coming in. God bless you guys. Yes. All right, next slide shows our answer. A reduction in anxiety and an improvement in mood also causes relaxation after a massage and is considered a reflexive benefit of massage. Now, here's the crazy thing. Is it a psychological benefit? Sure. Is it an emotional benefit? Sure. But the best answer is reflexive. It's definitely not a mechanical benefit, right? So reflexive is the best answer. That's a wrap. Boop, 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 boop. You did it. Thank you for hanging in with me a few extra minutes today. I really wanted to get through those questions with you. Um, I wanted to let you know that we're back. We're taking a break next week um, because of the Thanksgiving holiday. We'll be back on December 1st. Um, between now and then, there's tutoring available. If you're freaking out that you're going to have two weeks off, there's tutoring available. Send me a direct message. I'll give you details on that. Um, the next topic we're going to be talking about is ethics, boundaries, and laws. Um, I mentioned that also at the end of this session, at the end of the eight week session, and if this goes well, we may do it every time, uh, but we're going to be doing some visioning of your practice. And this is leading into um, next year, the new year, where we're going to be offering um, foundational support to launching your practice. Um, I'll be offering some of that uh, as a benefit of being a patron. So once you pass the MBLEX, you can hang in there, you can hang in there, you can stay with us, uh, supporting other students, uh, supporting other uh, graduates who are taking the uh, MBLEX, but also learning how to launch your practice. So you won't need to like go to the MBLEX classes anymore, um, but you will wanna launch your practice in a really healthy way. So we're gonna do some of that with you as soon to be licensed massage therapist at the end of the year, because it's just that vibe of the year, right? Um, visioning what we're going to do with 2023. Uh, so we're going to talk about specifically setting your rates, setting your hours, setting your schedule. All right. So that is all for today. Again, my name is Jody Skulls. I am, oh, let me stop sharing my screen here so I can say my proper goodbye. So my name again is Jody Skulls. I am a, your instructor for uh, the Emblex review class. And uh, I am delighted, sorry, my screen's going crazy. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, have this time with you. Thanks for hanging in there. It's a lot to talk about when we talk about the benefits of massage. Um, it should sound pretty familiar. And hopefully there were a few things that you were like aha moments on again today. Uh, if you're watching this and you're not a part of the patron community, join us. Uh, we meet every week, every Thursday at noon Eastern uh, to uh, have a live class. And then we post all those classes uh, right there in the patron site with a lot of other um, with a lot of other content as well. Uh, so I'm signing off. 
uh, for the recording. But for those of you who are live in class, I'm going to hang out for about another five to 10 minutes and take some individual questions. But bye for now. And if you're watching soon after, I'm going to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.